I walked out, leaving my daughter with a man who angrily told her to shut up, thinking she'd handle it she hasn't spoken to me in years, and now I'm left wondering was that the moment I lost her for good? My daughter doesn't want me in her life because of our differences in political opinions. I, 65, have two daughters, Alicia, 35, and Mary, 32. I have been divorced from their mother since the girls were in middle school and have been with my current partner, Janice, for 15 years, but we are not married. My girls were living with me full-time since they were in high school until they each moved out. I'll get right to it. My girls have opposing political views from Janice and I. This came to a head several years ago. Things had been strained for a while and finally blew up. The girls were over for Christmas and Mary said some things that upset Janice and Mary walked out. Alicia stayed, but it was awkward the rest of the day. Janice and I decided not to let Mary visit anymore, but I still saw her regularly on my own or with Alicia. A year or so after that, I took Alicia out for breakfast on her birthday. We had decided not to talk about politics anymore because we don't get along. Well, there was something upsetting on the TV and the restaurant was empty except for us and another couple and I made a comment about it and Alicia just started ranting. She wouldn't stop even when I told her to because she said I was the one who brought it up. The man at the other table agreed with me and started getting upset, saying what Alicia was stupid and that she should shut up. I agreed with him. Yet another day ruined, I guess, so I just walked out. I told her happy birthday before I left. She was very upset that I abandoned her with a stranger that was upset with her but all she had to do was stop talking, and that never would have happened. She said she felt unsafe, and that I shouldn't have just left her there. And maybe I shouldn't have, but she also needs to take responsibility for her part in this. Now she barely speaks to me, and I only see her on special occasions like birthdays or Father's Day and never at either of our our houses. She moved and hasn't told me where, it is somewhere local, though. I see Mary more often, but she doesn't want to get involved with me and Alicia's issues. Ida, for not taking total responsibility for what happened, relevant comment. We could share the same political beliefs and I would agree with your daughter. You broke the agreement and made a comment you knew she wouldn't agree with. Then you got mad when she responded to the comment. Then you agreed with a stranger in issue. He told her to shut up and she was talking stupid. No one says that in a calm manner, that is scary for a woman to be addressed like that by a man. After all of that, you left her, straight up left her with some stranger who was making comments about her. No wonder she felt unsafe. Her safety is more important than a disagreement. Bonus comment from the poster, I think it gives a better sense of his beliefs. I'm not racist and I think people should have bodily autonomy. For instance, no one should be forced to get any vaccine they don't want to. Original, daughter's POV, now deleted but preserved in a comment. May 12, 2023. I'm the daughter of a political dad. I have receipts, I'm Alicia. Those aren't our real names. Thankfully, there are screenshots of two conversations with him in my profile, one from the day of this incident in 2018 and one Facebook Messenger conversation from 2020. I have more and may post them, but for now, that should be enough. Yes, I made a throwaway for this. I don't want it attached to my main. My friend actually saw the post first and told me about it, and I considered for a while whether or not I should respond. It also took me a minute to find the conversations. I did want to address some things because even though the post was lacking details, most of the comments I was able to read were spot on, and this was very validating for me. As most of you guessed, yes, he is a Republican Trump supporter, and I'm progressive. And yes, we are in the U.S. This was pre-COVID. He came out as an anti-vaxxer during the pandemic. Janice is horrible lol. On the outside, she seems sorta okay, but she's all about manipulation and control. If you aren't wholly grateful for every little thing she does, she employs guilt trips. She's definitely the respect your elders type. There's more to the story there, but I'm not going into it. We used to all have family dinners at their house once or twice a month. The atmosphere had been strained for a while because dad and Janice didn't want Mary and I to comment about politics. They were allowed to say anything they wanted, but we weren't allowed to respond. We were told it was disrespectful to disagree with them in their own home. I thought it was very hypocritical, and it pissed me off. When I lived with them, I never really started my opinions much out loud because I wanted to keep the peace. Because I had to live there. As I got older and moved out, I stopped being quiet about it, and I think it shocked them. I was tired of listening to racist, misogynistic nonsense and not saying anything about it. I was civil about it. I didn't name call or make it personal. Them, on the other hand, is a different story. Apparently, I'm a liberal extremist, according to my dad who said that to my face, because I believe in civil rights and equal rights for everyone. Okay, that day at Christmas, my sister and I were talking about climate change amongst ourselves and they butted into the conversation and it exploded from there. We weren't talking to them at all and they started being passive aggressive and accusing us of thinking they were stupid 
which neither of us said. My sister had apparently had enough of it all and walked out. She was never invited over again. I continued to visit, but I too was eventually told I wasn't going to be invited again. The topic on TV in the cafe was about whichever mass shooting or police shooting had just unfolded at the time. I don't remember specifically. I also don't remember the exact wording of my dad's comment, but it was something about guns and our minorities. I had made a comment about gun control, specifically bringing up the cold, hard statistics about the demographic responsible for most mass shootings white men. And let's just say I wasn't sorry for pointing that out. I noticed immediately that my dad, being a white man himself, took offense. And it wasn't just him. The older white guy sitting at the table next to us seemed to bristle at what I said too, but I didn't care. I wasn't the one who started it. I had been holding my tongue for so long, tired of hearing his snide little remarks and passive-aggressive jabs. I guess he thought I'd never say anything back because we'd agreed to avoid topics like this, but enough was enough. It all started after my dad made one of his usual offhand sarcastic remarks. This time, I wasn't going to let it slide. I started listing off the statistics because facts matter and that's when my dad, clearly uncomfortable with where the conversation was heading, told me to stop talking. He said it with that familiar tone, the one that implied I was stepping out of line. But I wasn't going to be silenced. I looked him straight in the eye and said, why should I? I'm not ashamed of what I'm saying. Neither of us was being loud, by the way. It was just a normal conversation, though clearly the tension was starting to build. Then, out of nowhere, the guy sitting at the next table, the stranger who wasn't even part of our conversation, felt the need to butt in. Loudly, he said, well, I'd like her to shut up, and then he launched into a tirade, calling me stupid and acting like I had no idea what I was talking about. I sat there, stunned. I mean, I knew people had strong opinions, but for someone to speak to me like that, unprovoked, it was shocking. I was just about to gather myself and tell him where to go because, trust me, I was ready, but before I could, my dad did something I'll never forget. He turned to the man, and instead of defending me, his own daughter, he said, You know what, sir? I agree with you. I could barely process it. I felt like the wind had been knocked out of me. My dad, who had raised me, who I thought respected me, had just publicly sided with a stranger who was spewing hateful, aggressive nonsense. He agreed with him. I literally could not believe what I was hearing. Then, without even looking me in the eye, my dad stood up, muttered a half-hearted happy birthday, and walked out. He just left me there. The man at the other thimble continued ranting, his face red and voice full of venom, while his wife tried to shush him and calm him down. And all I could think about in that moment was how fast I could make it to the police station next door if this guy really lost it. I sat there, in disbelief, for a few minutes. I was numb. His wife eventually came over, looking mortified, and started apologizing to me over and over. It wasn't her fault, and she seemed genuinely sorry, but it didn't make any of it better. I felt like the ground had shifted beneath me, like everything I thought I knew about my relationship with my dad had crumbled in an instant. When I finally left, I held back tears the whole way home. I didn't want to cry in front of anyone, especially not on my birthday. It's funny, isn't it? That I still had to drive myself home, but at least we had driven separately and had already paid, paid for the meal. At least I wasn't stranded without a ride or stuck with the bill. That would have been the cherry on top. Ever since I started speaking up about my beliefs, about what I care about, my dad has been dismissive, patronizing, and condescending. It's almost like he can't stand the fact that I'm not the quiet, agreeable daughter I used to be. What's funny, though, is that when we first started having these debates, we were civil. He actually listened to me back then, but now. Now it feels like he doesn't even see me as someone worth listening to. It's heartbreaking, really, to realize that someone who is supposed to love you unconditionally can so easily side with a stranger, just because they're uncomfortable with hearing the truth. I even got him to indirectly admit that he's pro-choice once during a conversation. He doesn't identify as that, but when we spoke logically and reasonably about it, he admitted that at least in some situations abortion should, abortion should be allowed. I said congratulations that makes you pro-choice. And he didn't have anything to say to that lol. I think it's the buzzwords and the faux news that's really tripped him up and it's unfortunate. He and Janice live very much in their own little fantasy land and don't like being reminded that it isn't real. They've stopped going to family events partly because of this and partly because of Janice's medical condition. And I think partly because no one likes her. I already turned off messages and I don't really want to be responding to a bunch of comments. I might turn them off altogether at some point, if that's an option, but we'll see how this goes. This has already gotten way more attention than I'm comfy with, but I didn't want to leave everyone hanging. 
There were some really insightful comments that gleaned a lot of truth without knowing the full situation, so I wanted to give some closure. And also to say thanks, this has helped me a lot. As for what I'm going to do about it in real life, probably nothing because I'm pretty much done trying to do anything but keep up a surface level relationship. Once in a while, he tells my sister he misses me as if he doesn't understand what happened. We've had so many conversations about this that if he doesn't get it by now, he never will and I'm done trying. If you're wondering why I don't just cut him out completely, I'm not really sure myself. I guess I just don't have it in me right now. OP's receipts. Transcript, dated November 3rd, 2018. OP, thanks for leaving me there alone with that potentially violent guy. OP, I was just scared you know, and you just left OP. Make no mistake though, I will not be silent, I will be scared and loud. OP, remember how mom used to send us to school in tears? That's how I feel now. OP, you've become really good at breaking my heart. OP, I told you I'd been censored, harassed, and censored in the past and you didn't say anything close to I'm sorry that happened to you. OP, I guess you don't care. I'm sorry you don't want to have a relationship with me because we don't agree on things. Dad, if you still want to talk, it will be in person and in private. OP, G, censored name. I'm sorry you feel like that. I didn't mean to make you feel sad or abandoned. Is that what you meant? OP, Right well, I get that you're at work, and this isn't the best time, so you just let me know when you're ready to treat me like a human. 6.38 p.m. Dad, do you want to talk? OP, not tonight transcript, dated October 28, 2020. Dad, you know you can reach out to. I haven't heard from you, so I figured you wanted space for whatever reason. OP, I want space. What's there even to say? I'm not allowed at your house. You don't want to come to mine. You actively avoid family gatherings. You abandoned me on my birthday in a public place with a strange man who was yelling at me after you took a side a few years ago. That was what made me start seeing a therapist too. You bring up hypothetical situations where we'd be on the opposite sides of a hypothetical civil war for no other reason than to divide us, I guess. You've made it very clear that your politics are more important to you than I am. I get the very clear impression that you don't want me in your life, so I'm not trying to be anymore. Dad, so you're good as is. OP, if that's going to be your response to all of that, yeah. Dad, okay, OP, guess that means you're good with it too. Dad, I'm not going to push you into anything you're not good with. OP, right? That fact that this was your only response to everything I just said means it's all true. And why would I want to pursue anything with someone who thinks politics are more important than their own daughter? Someone who betrays her and then abandons her in a scary situation. Dad, sad it's come to this. You want to talk, you can call. It's up to you. OP, sad indeed. I bought a house tell and I'm moving on, censored. Not that I think you'd ever try to visit me, but just in case I won't live there anymore. Dad, so do you want to talk or not? OP, do you? Dad, I'm always open to conversation. OP, tell me now if you stand by anything you've said or done. Cause if so, I don't see the point in talking about it. Dad, so you don't take responsibility for anything. OP, ha ha ha. Do I take responsibility for you abandoning me? No for not being allowed at your house. The reason being because you and Redacted wanted to talk about politics but wanted to prevent me from saying anything? No for you not wanting to come to my house. No for you avoiding family gatherings in general? No for you loving your politics more than me? No do I take responsibility for having my own opinions and deciding that I won't stay silent anymore? Sure but you didn't like that. You liked it better when I just shut up and you could say whatever you wanted. It's never going back to that. If you do or say something shitty, I'm going to call you out on it and hold you accountable. Those were some really shitty things you did to me and no matter what you think I did to deserve it, I absolutely did not deserve it. And you're not going to convince me otherwise. Dad wow dad well, congratulations on your house and I really do hope things go your way. I hope you continue to be well, OP, same to you. New update. Daughter still, Jewel 20, 20. 23. Check my profile for the history, but basically I found a post from my dad complaining that I barely talked to him and posted here to give the missing reasons. I'm deciding to go no contact with him because of texts he sent me this morning. Screenshots in my profile. It speaks for itself, but the summary is he sent me a photo of him and Janice meeting Mike Pence, which like, that's fine by itself, I don't care, but he's decided to rub it in my face knowing I don't want to hear about it. Then he tried to gaslight me by saying he sent it to honor Mike Pence's wishes and that it's a positive message. I told him not to contact me anymore. I don't need this nonsense in my life. Honestly, it's thanks to these posts and Reddit that the decision to cut contact was so clear to me, but I have to admit I'm shaking as I write this. It's obviously not the outcome that anyone wanted. OP's Receipts. Part 2. Transcript. Dated July 20th. 
2023. Dad image of three adults posing for a picture. Former Vice President of the United States. Mike Pence is in the middle. The two adults on either side of him have their faces censored and are labeled as Dad and Janice. Dad Mike said to say hello and best wishes to my children. OP, I need you to tell me why you sent me that. Dad, honoring the man's wishes. OP, did you think at all about how I would react to it? Dad, to a positive message? Dad, I guess that won't happen again. OP, it won't but not for the reason you think. You know we don't agree on politics. That's what sparked the incident that led me to go low contact with you. I've told you how that day made me feel, but you never understood. This proves that at the very least you still don't understand. It's childish. I was willing to keep up some sort of relationship with you as long as you didn't do anything malicious, but you just can't help yourself. You sent this knowing full well that I would not like it. Then you tried gaslighting me about it being for his wishes, or that it's a positive message. I can't do this anymore. I don't need someone in my life just trying to get a rise out of me, especially my own family. Do not contact me anymore. I'm done. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the notification bell to stay updated with more shocking real-life stories happening around you.